Okay everyone, we're now on our next video, number theory, and here we're going to start with our next chapter in the classical milestone. So though this chapter will be quite um, not very detailed because of the of the problem in the time constraints, but anyways, we will be touching um, some part of it. Um, this time we're going to be touching um, a wide, okay, even though a wide um, a variety of contents, even though it's not in depth but at least we have reached this part okay i will be um facilitating this and um, upgrading this in the future if the, if time allows now um we'll start with the wilson's theorem this classical milestones will start or will feature three okay classical results namely the wilson's theorem which we're going to talk about today fermat's little theorem and euler's theorem which have played significant role in the development of the theory of congruences Okay, all three theorems theorems illustrate the power of congruences and the congruence notation. So we'll begin with our with the Wilson's theorem now in this video. So um the Wilson's theorem, um this is named af after Edward um or rather John Wilson. Um he is an English uh student, an uh, English mathematician, shall we say, who is a student of of the English mathematician Edward Waring. Okay, describe him as meditationis algebraic algebraic. Okay, so the following conjecture by Wilson. So um this will be this theorem, let's get into it, that we'll be discussing the 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 history after um maybe some time. But the, um Wilson's theorem in, in our module is mo is theorem three four point three. Um, this is Wilson's theorem again. So if P is a prime, it states here, if this P, this certain P here, is a prime, so then um, um, P minus 1, okay, that P minus, minus 1, um, get the factorial of that, is congruent to minus 1 mod, modulo P. Okay, so again, if P is a prime, so P minus 1, deduct 1 from that prime number, um, get the factorial of that, it is congruent to minus 1 modulo p. Okay, so that's Wilson's theorem 4.3. We will turn to the converse of the Wilson's theorem, which is actually or also true. This states that um, we, we call this theorem 4.4. If this certain n, okay, if this certain n here is a positive integer such that n minus 1, is congruent to minus one mod n, actually the same statement here, then n is a prime. Actually, this is just the converse of Wilson's theorem, and therefore we will have a remark down below that it is, um, together with these theorems 4.3 and 4.4, they furnish a necessary and sufficient condition. So when we say necessary and sufficient, that's the if and only if uh, function in our logic. So for a positive integer to be a prime. So if, if it is a prime, Therefore, if p, if this certain positive integer is a prime, okay, this is a prime if and only if this uh, congruence follows. Okay, so a positive integer n, which is greater than or equal to 2, is a prime if and only if n minus 1 factorial, okay, is congruent to minus 1 mod modulo n. This condition provides a seemingly simple test for prime math primality of numbers to check if n is a prime so all we need to do is determine whether n minus 1 quality factorial is congruent to minus 1 mod n so for example let's give some couple of examples here down below um let's start with the first one which we have illustrated here so let's start with um let's have for example uh take let's take first let's see and take um seven okay we know seven is a prime but we'll just we'll just verify if it is a prime if ever our math teachers really tricked us if that this is not a prime so let's try by wilson's theorem we'll do this so if p is a prime so we'll try meaning this must be true so therefore so we have uh, so we have oops sorry So we have um, p, so we have 7 minus 1, uh, 
quantity factorial it must be congruent to minus 1 mod 7 minus 1 mod 7 so let's do let's try if this is indeed true so 7 minus 1 is 6 and 6 factorial what is 6 factorial um, 6 factorial let's write it again okay 6 factorial okay 6 factorial is congruent to minus 1 mod 7 sorry Okay, so 6 factorial actually is going to give us um, 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is, if we're going to check that, that's going to be 720. So 720. Move it all down. 720. 720. Is congruent to minus 1 mod 7. Okay, so what is 720 um, mod 7 equal to, by the way? Is it, is it true that it's congruent to minus 1 or is it not? Is it incongruent? So let's try. So let's have 720 divided by 7. Let's try that, divided by 7. So this gives us um, 1, 7 that cancels up, that cancels up. Let's bring down 20. 20 um, by 7 is going to give us um what what number is this um two this is zero two two um this is going to give us 14 and what we have is six six so therefore it's remainder six so remainder six okay now what is this remainder six actually remainder six if we're going to flip that in our congruence relations let's try to imagine the, the universe of mod 4 mod, mod 7 for now let's start with um uh, 0 start here 0 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so we have 0 here 7 starts here again and then 8 and so on but what where is negative 1 okay negative 1 is over here negative 1 negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, ne negative 5, negative 6, and negative 7. It's just correct because negative 7 is a multiple of 7, right? Oops, sorry, it should be negative 6. Okay, because um, negative 7 is 7 times minus 1, so that's correct. So we can see that positive 6, the remainder 6 here, is equivalent to minus 1. Okay, 6 is equivalent to minus 1. So therefore, indeed, okay, so therefore, um, with this, let me erase this first so that let's clear this up. So since we have 6, okay, just a moment. Okay, since we have 6, uh, let's write it here. 6. is congruent to minus 1 mod 7. So therefore, um, which is true. Well, which, is, which makes it true. This is therefore correct. Because in short, we say that um, this just simply means... 7 minus 1 factorial, quantity factorial, is congruent to minus 1 mod 7. So with that, therefore, we can say, hence we can say, or hence, sorry, hence, Um, 7 is a prime. 
So therefore, um, our math teachers is not lying to us that seven is is um is not a prime. Okay, so therefore we can see it here, and seven is a prime. Let's give a counter uh, an example of not a prime. Um, we're going to make use of the same theorem, right? So let's have, for instance, let's take a smaller number. Let's take a smaller number. Um, what is not a prime? Let's try f um, six. Is six a prime or not a prime? Our teachers have been telling us that it is not, so let's try. Um, under example, take six and we'll use the um, Wilton's theorem. So we have uh, six minus one quantity factorial is equal to okay what is this equal to this is equal to five factorial five factorial is equal to five times four times three times two times one that's going to give us um five times five times four times three times two times one um five times four is twenty twenty times three is sixty six times two is one twenty it's one twenty now, 120 mod 6, what is 120 mod 6? Let's try to calculate that. 120 divided by 6, that's going to give us 2. And then this is going to give us 6. And then this gives us, um, well, this is this gives us 0. Right, this gives us 0. Okay, so therefore, this is a remainder 0. Okay, so therefore, 6 minus 1 factorial is equal to 5 factorial, which is equal to 120. Which is okay, which is um, congruent to zero mod uh, six, which turns to say if this is congruent um, mod zero. Okay, let me erase this part first. Okay, if it is congruent to zero, okay, if it is congruent to zero mod six, it turns to say that it is incongruent to minus 1 mod 6, right? Because it's congruent to, to 0 mod 6. So hence, um, hence, uh, 6 is not a prime. Okay, so that's it uh, for this video. At least you have, um, you have uh, saw um, examples of how to determine if the if a number is a prime or not using the Wilson's theorem. Okay, so again, this is a simple test for primality to check if if a certain number is a prime. Just some remark. Um, unfortunately, this test has no practical significance because n minus one factorial this one a bit here. It's okay because our n is small. But how about if we're going to ask if two million three hundred seventy two thousand 412 is a prime so if we're going to use this that's going to be 2 million something 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 minus 1 factorial that's going to that's pretty much a big number so n minus 1 quantity factorial becomes large as n gets large and it it happens very fast so for example if we're going to if you want to determine if 101 is a prime or not so you need to make 101 minus 1 is 100. 100 factorial is pretty big already. So we are only in the hundreds numbers. So the primes play um, a lot more beyond that. So um, yeah, again, this is just a simple test for primality for the Wilson's theorem. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you would like and subscribe. And yeah, see you soon. Thank you.